So Des, what are the most relevant uh, trends that we should be monitoring moving forward for the food processing sector? So Darlene, food inflation. So I want to talk about that again. I know it's a hot topic. It's something we've discussed already, but it's important because what the consumer does actually will have an impact on food processors as well. So if we look at food inflation, and Christian showed this earlier, we've actually had two years now where food inflation has been higher than overall inflation. So one of the top questions consumers are asking are, when is food inflation going to fall in line with overall inflation, or actually will it? And so that's a, you know, a question that's the top of mind. So um, research that we've done, we look at you know, how long it takes for processing prices to make their way through to retail prices. And so this chart on the screen coming up here will show uh, where we're at with food inflation, as well as the food manufacturing prices. The key point from this chart is to actually look at how long it takes for that price to flow through the supply chain. And so we can see it's roughly nine to 12 months. So uh, early on in the pandemic, it actually, you know, food manufacturing prices went up quickly and food and grocery prices didn't go up for a few months. And now we're seeing the flip side. So as food inflation has come down, it's at 4.7%. We've seen that the food manufacturing prices are come down to 0.4%, which is a five-year low. And so we're seeing this, and it's come down from about 10%. So with this deceleration in food manufacturing prices, that's going to flow through to retail prices, but it won't likely happen until probably mid-2024 or even later into the year. So it's something that we have to be mindful of, and that will actually uh, you know, benefit consumers, but it will weigh on food processors as uh, that demand has changed. So you said food inflation, we, we know, is now moderating, and it's yeah. expected to continue to slow down in 2024. And that's great news for the consumer, but you also mentioned earlier that what the consumer does has a direct impact, right, on, the, on yeah. uh, his or her consumption habits has a direct impact on the food processors. Yeah. So what does that mean for the food processor? Yeah, so what we've seen over the last number of years is actually really strong manufacturing sales. And so in the chart here, you can see uh, through the pandemic, sales growth is really strong. In 2023, our forecast is sales about 6.3%, which is still strong growth, and then actually slowing to about 2.4% next year, or sorry, 25 But the one big thing to factor into this is this includes inflation or the impacts of inflation. So if you actually take inflation out of these sales figures and it gives you more of an indication of what volume is at, we've actually seen in 2023, um, that would come in at less than 1%. It's about 0.7% would be the sales growth. And so for 2024, if you do the same thing, sales growth would actually come in at less than 2% uh, when you exclude inflation. So uh, it's not surprising. You know, what we've seen is the volume hasn't been uh, very robust because of what consumers are doing. So, uh, you know, consumers actually are spending less, if you adjust for inflation, are actually spending less at the grocery store now than they were, uh, you know, during the pandemic. And so we're, they're spending about $3,300 uh, per person was what the in spending was in the year prior to the pandemic. That is now about $3,100. So we're seeing that those households are making some tough decisions. They're choosing where they spend their money. They're buying, say, some of those lower value added goods. Uh, they're maybe minimizing food waste. And even some food or some households are actually consuming less food. And so this is going to be weighing on, on some of the sales and the volume for these food processors going forward. Mm. And, and I, I suspect that those sales, it, it's variable depending in which subsector of the food processing sector that you're actually operating in. And uh, I think we'll have to wait for FCC's food and beverage report that's coming out here at the end of March uh, to get all those details, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good plug for the report. It's a fantastic report. I'm going more of a high level of, uh, overview of the sector, but that report will actually go into each sector, subsector, and do a very detailed uh, dive into uh, you know, sales and margins. So uh, what we've actually seen though in 2023 was, was those sales you know, were still decent at 6.3%, but because costs were still quite high, we actually saw a contraction in, in food processing margins. And so the figure that's coming up here, you'll actually see that um, our index of margins in 2023 actually hit a low of 88.5. So we've seen that declining trend over the last number of years coming out of the pandemic. The good news is, you know, even though sales are slowing heading into 2024, uh, we know that costs have come down as well. So we're actually going to see an improvement in margins. It's, it's improving over uh, highest it's been in the last three years. So that's a good news story for the sector. 
Um, I did want to focus on wages because I know that's one of the key topics and Christian touched on, on uh, labour earlier. And so what we've actually seen is those wages are actually cooling. Uh, as the economy softens, we're seeing those vacancy rates come down. Uh, you know, and so we're seeing a, that labour market is going to be loosening up a little bit. And so that should bring down wages. And so that'll actually help the sector as well um, with reduced wage costs. So um, it's getting somewhat optimistic. It's making that turn, I think, out of the pandemic um, and post-pandemic. So we're going to see some positivity in the food sector going forward. Great. Thanks for that overview, Des. Really appreciate it.